Welcome back everyone to the Mori Garage. Now that we have our new intercooler on, it's time to get started on installing our new ATB turbo kit with our Garrett Turbo. Stay tuned. <laughs> The first thing we're going to have to do is remove our exhaust bracing here in the back. And you're going to have another one up front up here that runs the length of this all the way over. For the exhaust bracing in the back, you're going to have two T40 torque screws that you'll have to remove. And for the front bracing, everything is going to be a 15 millimeter. You'll have two bolts on either side and you will actually have two 15 millimeter nuts that you will have to remove here and here. After you remove the exhaust bracings, you're gonna to have to remove these 14 millimeter nuts and bolts to separate the downpipe from the midpipe. There's gonna be one up front here and there's gonna be another one in the very back back here as well. So we'll remove those and then we'll remove our mid pipe and then we can start taking our down pipe out. After you remove the back connection for the mid pipe here, you're gonna have one exhaust hanger bracket and all you have to do is just slide it and it will come out of there. After you get your mid pipe removed, it's time to remove the down pipe. So you're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts on either side here and you're gonna have to go up in there and remove the oxygen sensor for your O2 sensor, it's just a little clip. There's that, it's actually connected up top. And there's this little piece right here. All you have to do is press it down. You'll hear a click and then it will pull straight out. After we do that, you're gonna have to remove these two bolts right here or these two nuts right here. They will be 13 millimeters. And then you remove the V-band clamp that's actually holding the downpipe to the turbo. I wanted to show you guys this while the downpipe is off of the car. It was hard to film while I was doing everything and it's a very tight spaces so I just want to show you this so you can get a better idea of what all you have to do. So you saw this, I took these off. It is two bolts that fit right in there and there they are right there. The second thing you will have is this piece right here. These two bolts will be sticking through and there will be two nuts attached to it and you will have this little plate underneath that will come off as well with that. The V-band clamp is very easy. It's this bolt right here that sticks, slides straight through there and you'll have this little locking nut and washer they go in there as well. You don't actually have to take it all the way off, but it does make it easier so that you can stretch this thing out to get it off a little bit easier. The last thing you'll have as far as the V-band clamp goes is this little gasket that actually seals the downpipe to the turbo itself. The O2 sensors. On this one right here, the one that's closest to you, there's a little press button right there. If you press that down, this will slide right out. The other one is the exact opposite. The button that you press down is actually the piece that's attached to the harness. So once you press that down, it's clipped into right this piece right here. This will slide right out. After you remove the down pipe, it's time to remove the hot side charge pipe. So I've already got this piece disconnected from the intercooler. The other things we're going to have to remove is a 10 millimeter bolt right here on this bracket. You're going to have a 13 millimeter bolt right here on this bracket. And then we're going to have a seven millimeter bolt on this hose clamp up here that's actually connected to the turbo. After we get our hot side charge pipe off, we got to take these wipers off. So there's two little caps. They go over the end there. Just pull that off. I need to mark these because they can be a little bit of a pain to get back straight and where they need to be. After you get your nuts off of your wipers, these wipers can be difficult to get off. So you have to take it and jiggle it back and forth fairly hard and then eventually they will slide upwards. Next, you just gotta remove the two vents on both sides. Just reach back here and pull up and it'll pop right out. After you remove the vents, you're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt on this side and one on the other side as well. After you remove the two bolts on either side, you're gonna have a clip that sits on either side just like this. I've already removed this one. All you have to do is lift this up you can fit a flathead underneath there. Just push this piece back and pull it out. You'll have to pop this up and out and remove it over here from this side as well. And you can lift this thing up and pull it straight out. Now you have to remove the intake. So depending on what intake you have, this one is aftermarket. So I am actually gonna have to remove this. I'm gonna have one bolt here to remove. You will have this little clamp back here You'll pinch this and it'll pull straight out. And the last piece that you'll have to remove is the hose clamp where it attaches to the turbo. 
Next, you'll want to drain your coolant. So come up top first, open this cap. It'll help it drain a little bit easier. To drain your coolant, you'll need a drain pin, and you'll use this rubber hose to drain your coolant. You'll hook your rubber hose to this little nipple right here, turn this, and drain it into your drain pan. Just know, guys, you will need a pair of pliers. Uh, when you turn this thing halfway, nothing will come out. It does need it. You do have to use a pair of pliers to actually turn it the rest of the way. After you drain your coolant, you're going to want to remove your rear motor mount. This car does have an aftermarket Cobb motor mount, so I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter Allen wrench on this bolt, and you will have a 15 millimeter bolt on this end. The next thing you're going to have to do is disconnect your vacuum lines. So you have this one right here that you're looking at. It is actually going into the blow-off valve, and then you will have a second one right here. So disconnect those two. Everything else you can leave on the turbo. I just want to show you guys. So here are your two vacuum vacuum sources. This is the one that's going to be going to the blow-off valve, and then this one is the one that will be going to all of your other sources. With the last thing that you're going to have to disconnect is the wiring harness. And how you do that, you just reach up in there and there's this little silver clip. You'll press it down just like that and this will slide straight out. After you remove the vacuum lines, you'll have to disconnect these oil lines. So you'll have one that's connected to the oil pan itself down here and then up here where it's connected to the turbo. Next, you'll come up here kind of close to where your vacuum hoses were at and you're going to remove the oil feed line. It's just one bolt, and then you've got your banjo bolt right here. Next, you'll have to remove the bolt for your coolant line. It sits right above your turbo, where the turbo meets the downpipe. Just note, guys, when you remove that line and your oil feed line, there will be quite a bit of oil and quite a bit of coolant coming out. The last coolant line is going to be actually up top. It's going to be this one on the inside right here. I'm sorry, that's as close as I can get it. Uh, I haven't even figured out myself how I'm going to get to it yet. I got the coolant line off. It was very difficult. Uh, I, I went underneath, came up top, tried to figure out ways. The easiest way that I found is to actually go underneath here with your, with some needle nose, all the way underneath and then pinch the bottom of it from there. Now that we have all of our lines disconnected, we can take our heat shield off of our turbo flange. Next, you'll remove the four bolts from the flange and remove the turbo. And the old stock turbo is out. I wanted to share one thing with you guys though. This coolant line right here, if you take this off from this bolt, it will make this thing a whole lot easier to get out. I did manage to get it out without it, but it, I had to twist and turn, and it was a pain in the butt. But the old one's out. We'll start getting the new one back in. Side-by-side -side comparisons. Here is our old turbo, and here is our new one. I just wanted to show you guys what everything that ATP actually provides. So you've got your coolant feed and return lines here. You're going to have your oil feed line here. You'll be reusing the oil return line from the original turbo. However, ATP does provide new gaskets for it. And then you'll have boost taps. A couple of these lines are not going to run exactly like your factory lines. They get really close to some hot components underneath the car. So what I did is went and bought some of this DEI heat sheath. This is what it looks like. So you'll just cut it to length and then run your lines through it. To begin prepping this new turbo, I'm going to go ahead and start attaching these fittings. This is going to be my coolant return fitting. You can see how a washer goes on either side, and then this end right here will thread right down in there. But first, I'm going to go ahead and attach my braided line right here to this end. Of this is not something you would normally have to do, but I wanted to share this with you guys. This, I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of the fittings, but I just happened to look down in here and I found these shavings down in there. That's not good. So go ahead and check your fittings. Make sure there's nothing loose in there. Next, we're gonna assemble our oil feed line. This little elbow right here is going to connect on there just like that. This piece will go to this nipple here. And then this end with your washer will attach to the oil pan. This 90 degree angle over here is what's gonna to attach to the turbo itself and the fitting that is already installed by ATP. So go ahead and take your fitting with your brass washer and thread this in. Just remember when you're tightening this down, this block is made of aluminum and it will strip. So just get it snug. You don't have to tighten it down super tight. After that, go ahead and come back to your turbo and install this 90 degree fitting on there. You don't, I'm not going to tighten it down all the way because I may need to adjust this once I get it on the car. 
that's all that I'm going to assemble on the turbo itself right now. I will install the other coolant line once I get the turbo on the car. But one thing to note is that once you get this thing on the flange, do not lose this fire ring. That's actually how you're going to seal it to the exhaust manifold. I'm going to try and leave this tape on there until I get it get these hung on the bolts on the car then I'll remove it so that I make sure that I don't lose this. So it actually worked out perfectly. I left the tape on while putting this up in there. Believe it or not getting the new turbo in was a lot easier than getting the old turbo out and maybe because that's because I didn't remove all of the lines off of the turbo or the original turbo but it was. But I got it up in here and what I actually did is hang it on the hangers, push it all the way in, make sure it's steady and then I came up top and then I just kind of put my hand down here, pulled it off the hangers, held it in place, removed the tape with my other hand, and then sat it back up on there, and then put my washers and nuts on. Next, you're gonna run your oil feed line here. So there it is, that's the piece that we attached while it was off the car. So I just wanted to show you, I ran mine kind of up and around the top there. Uh, I've seen others that ran it around the bottom. I'm not really sure. Oh, they did that there's not a whole lot of room to run uh, but if you run it up top like that it really does kind of keep it everything out of the way and it's not going to be near anything that's going to be hot after you install your oil feed line you're going to install your oil return line atp gives you two gaskets or both ends you're going to use the stock bolts for the block itself or for the oil pan and then you'll have these step down bolts that will actually go to the turbo here is your oil drain line so here I have my step down studs in here, the eight millimeter threads into this, and then it will be your gasket, then it will be your line itself, then the washer, nut, and then obviously this is the other end of the bolt. And then your other end will thread straight into the block with the new gasket in the center with the stock bolts. Now we're gonna install our other coolant line. We're gonna do these two first. One goes to the block itself, and the other one goes to the turbo and you'll have two washers that go in between it. And there is our first fitting on the turbo, and the second one is right up top here. Now we're gonna install this 45 degree fitting on the fitting that we put on the block itself. This end will go to the 45 degree fitting, and then this end with the 90 degree turn is gonna go on the turbo. For this coolant line, just remember, this 90 degree is going to be going up and slightly to the left, and then your 45 degree this way is going to be coming this direction. Just make sure it's got enough room to clear for your downpipe right here. The last line that we're going to get connected is the coolant line that we first put on the turbo before we put it on the car. This little fitting is going to go on the end of it. Your hose is going to attach on the end of this, and then we're going to put the other clamp on this end and that's going to go to our stock place up by the driver's side. When you're done it should look just like this and then this end we will fish back up to the driver's side where we'll connect it there. I just want to show you guys this again. I know I did the one where I was taking this off but this is kind of a hard hose to find. So this is going to be where your coolant line runs to. So if we sneak in here into the engine bay it's going to be this hose right here. The one right behind this one. It's right there. You will have an eight millimeter hose clamp on it. And it was very difficult to actually get this thing up on there. As you can see, it didn't go quite all the way, but it is definitely far enough. What I ended up having to do was actually reach my hand around the back side here and push it in from there. The last thing we're gonna have to do is remove all of our old vacuum lines and install them on our new turbo. So we're gonna have this one coming from the wastegate We've got this one going into our cold air intake. And then on the other side over here, we've got this side running into our hot side charge. And then this side right here will actually be going up to the vacuum source itself. So what I'm going to do is actually remove all the lines. I'm only going to attach the one to the wastegate on the new turbo. I'm going to put my coolers on the end for my intake and for my charge side. I'm going to kind of line out, see how these things are going to need to fit because I'm going to have to drill the holes in those. And then I will mark with a little silver Sharpie on there where I want to drill my hole. And then I will pull those off, come back, and then attach this line to my intake side and then find a place to have a uh, 
hole drilled for the charge side. So here it is off of the old turbo. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to the wastegate on the new turbo. This is gonna be going to the source up top. This is the line that we originally connected or disconnected when I took the old turbo out. And then I'll have to find a hole to drill from this line going into the cold air intake up top. And then I'll also have to tap another hole on the hot side charge for this. I have my two places marked for my two vacuum lines. This is the one that's gonna be going to the intake side. And I had to pull this coupe out of the hot side charge pipe kit that I ordered from CPE, which will be in the next episode. But it's back here. I know that's really wonky because I couldn't get it to where I wanted. So I just kind of know in between this zone and this zone, I can put it anywhere in there and it's gonna fit. So I actually used a quarter inch drill bit. So here's the hole that is actually drilled. And then here's my hot side that I already completed. I pushed it through. The washer goes on first, then your nut, and then you'll have your clamp that will go on top of that. For the hot side piping, I'm going to go ahead and put my clamp on because it is a smaller diameter than the top, so I won't be able to slide it over. That way I can tighten it down later on. This is really hard to show you guys, but there is my vacuum. There is the module itself. The hot side is going in right here. I don't know how well you can see that. Here's the outlet. That's where my charge pipe is going to connect to. Here's where I put my outlet. If we come over here, you can see right there on this elbow, this is actually going up to my cold air intake. And then obviously it's gonna be routed to the wastegate on the new turbo. And then my main line is actually coming down up top up here. So kind of looking at it from the top, this will give you a little, little bit better view. Here is for my stock blow off valve, which I will be capping that off. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it down here or if I'll remove this whole line and cap it up top. But here is my main vacuum line going down. And then you can see right there on the elbow, that's actually where I showed you the vacuum line is that on the cold air intake. That's gonna wrap this episode up. Stay tuned for the next episode when we install our CPE hot side charge pipe, CPE XL kit tile blow off valve, Cobb downpipe, and reinstalling all the factory equipment and starting this thing up. See you then.